Howdy did it do, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, now we're moving to our next batch tutorial, and we're looking even more at the for loop, or the for command. We, uh, we had just recently been checking out some of the options that we can do, and uh, at least that we can supply with the for loop. And today I want to be showing you guys a whole nother one called EOL. And uh, we'll get into that more, but let's go ahead and get the party started, you know. I'll create the uh, Windows command line along with Notepad++. Go ahead and create a script. Script.bat. And for those of you who are very observant, you can see that there is a script.cfg that exists in my path. And uh, that script.cfg is just what we're going to be looking at right here. Uh, this is a file that I have added, and uh, we're going to be using it as a good example for how we can use the EOL option inside the for loop. But before we jump into that, let's actually create the program. Let's uh, set local, enable delayed expansion. Go to main, create main, set local, and local, yada yada yada. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get our for loop ready to go. Into for loop, and uh, we'd be using the dash f tag, and that allows us to work with files just a little bit more. And uh, we'll use g, <laughs> as usual, inside of our set, but remember with the dash f tag we can supply the file name. So in our case, it's script.cfg. Then we do, what we can do is we can echo out the value. Okay. Now when we run this, what's going to happen is we will get up until the first delimiter, because we have not supplied otherwise. Now remember the delimiter is by default to space, so I'm missing a couple of my lines here. We're missing the first three lines. So we're going to want to fix that. We can supply an option right after the dash, or I'm sorry, right after the tag and before the variable. So what we'll do is I will set the delimiter to be forward slash, because those don't exist. And uh, our file reads, this is the configuration file for something cool. We made it ourselves, and batch will ignore any commented lines. Clearly, a commented line is something donated with a hashtag. Now, all of these three that are just plain old English uh, have a hashtag, and we want to be able to uh, ignore them, because we don't want the program to have to bother reading those if we were actually creating a configuration file for a script or something. So what we can do is we can use the EOL option, and that's this is called the end of line. I'm sure you guys were able to figure that out. The character at the start of each line uh, indicates a comment. So when we come across this character, we'll just stop looking at the line. And if it's the first character in the line, much like our uh, hashtag is, it's just going to completely disregard the line entirely. So we can just supply the hashtag. Now when we run this, we only see the batch is cool and the number ran 10 times. We don't see our comments, so this kind of gets the job done for us. We could, in this case, use the skip 3 term, but that really kind of defeats the purpose, because we could obviously just go ahead and add something in there. Now I want to show you guys something else that's pretty interesting. I'll go into my text editor here. I've got this blank line right in between batch is cool and number ran, but batch was not able to uh, to see that. It, in fact, it, it skips over blank lines. This is default. Uh, I believe there's a way to change this, and that is something that we're going to get into real, real soon. <laughs> but in the meantime, I did want to let you guys know that it will skip over any blank lines. Now, if we can put another comment here. Another comment. I'll save this. If, since we're skipping those first three, we're still seeing that comment, which defeatly, which uh, completely just uh, defeats the purpose. So we are going to want to change the EOL back to being the hashtag. And then it'll skip over the whole other comment. There you go, guys. <laughs> uh, a little bit more of a practical application for some of the stuff you can do in Batch, especially during the for loop. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.